Illuminati, also known as Blair, is a content creator that makes a lot of videos based around popular internet-related sources and activities, like a news-slash-documentary channel dedicated to internet culture with a decent amount of effort in the video scripting and editing. Of course, in making such kinds of videos alongside her editors and whatnot, there's always bound to be some sort of similarities with other videos because that's just how internet content works. People edit and talk about similar subjects. What started as a small little argument quickly turned into a giant mess that I was surprised I didn't see coming because I was not ready for the amount of behind the scenes shenanigans this girl was up to to come to light. Shout out to the Patreon members as always, and if you'd like to support the channel yourself, you can check out the link below or in the corner. With that being said, let's jump right into this, because this is actually a pretty interesting case to watch unfold. The situation began on April 20th, 2023, when Blair made a Twitter post calling out Legal Eagle, a massive YouTuber and lawyer who talks about the expected law-based subject matter, and his editors were plagiarizing her video editing style after not hearing back from her team. She would then post a screenshot of an email showing Legal Eagle's editor asking her about an After Effects plugin and if they could hook him up with it for a video project he was currently working on, with the email not sounding malicious in any sort of way at all. Along with that email would be a Discord screenshot in which the editor Danny would join asking people around how to do a specific effect in one of his videos, again not being malicious at all in the messages. Blair would then take things to the next level, showing off multiple examples of Legal Eagle and his team apparently copying her, the first set being the torn paper effect that's seen on both of their videos, and the next would be the skewed angle with the text being highlighted. These effects are seen in a bunch of YouTube videos and even documentaries throughout the years, so the fact this was her attempt at showing off her stuff was copied showed we weren't dealing with anything substantial but rather just someone but her over literally nothing. She would continue to say that she wouldn't have cared to make this call out were it not for the email and discord messages, but again, they were literally just inquiries on how to edit a certain way and not in any way trying to copy or undermine her, so the call out post is at best a lack of emotional control and at worst a malicious attempt at going after someone she thinks is a competitor. Legal Eagle would hit her up and tell her nobody on his team is trying to copy her and they've been using the same editing styles for around 4 years now, and points out the obvious that the editing styles have been used by countless other people throughout YouTube and it would be ignorant to pretend Legal Eagle's editors were copying her. Legal Eagle will defend his editor as he was just trying to learn a new way to edit and nothing more, and would also point out that he's a fan of her and wasn't trying in any way to offend her while trying to reach out about his inquiry. He would then show the rest of the Discord messages that showed Danny wasn't even mad or anything when they said they couldn't help him, again showing that this was all out of good faith in what Blair was trying to portray him as, before saying his last piece about how it's normal for editors to ask others for help or ideas on how to do something because that's just how people work in that side. H Bomber guy would catch wind of the situation and point out the irony of everything because Blair had actually straight up plagiarized someone's script word for word in one of her own videos before, according to him. Professor Hugh Fudenberg. Professor Fudenberg has long been controversial. A man named Hugh Fudenberg, a former immunologist who has been long controversial. In 1989, he was caught up in a bizarre lawsuit involving the Food and Drug Administration, which told him he had to stop injecting his autistic child patients with blood products. In 1989, he was caught up in a bizarre lawsuit with the Food and Drug Administration, which told him he had to stop injecting his autistic patients with blood products. After this hypocrisy and irony being shown live in front of everyone, Blair would delete the call-out post and make a new one showing that she hashed things out with Legal Eagle and apologized for jumping the gun and letting her emotions get the best of her. The drama would die down from that point onwards and people were ready to move on, because it was pretty clear it was just a heat of the moment Twitter tired that a massive YouTuber of her size shouldn't do, but it can be chalked up as just a small mistake as people are human. Blair would even claim during this drama that people were trying to hack into her accounts, showing that things were getting out of control for no real reason and it was a good sign that things were solved rather quickly. Of course, just because she hashed it out with Illegal Eagle doesn't mean she's out of the water just yet, as YouTuber The Click would see what was going on and start to out his own grievances with Blair on April 23rd. He would start his thread off explaining that he hasn't worked with Blair in over two years after leaving her collaboration group Sad Milk because of similar emotional stunts from her. He then explains this further as of what exactly he means, and says the last meeting he ever had with her was full of verbal abuse and name calling from a clearly emotional person losing control of their actions. He would quote one of the things she allegedly told him while berating him in call, and then after that half of the Sad Milk group left after seeing all all this, with her going on to spread lies and half-truths about the members on Reddit and vague posts on Twitter about what really happened. Blake would claim that Blair would spread rumors around and get people to turn on you, and even work with people that don't like you because they have a common enemy in mind. When people start to question Blair and ask if she was the problem, she would bring up decades old content to try to get them to be quiet, with Click explaining that a lot of what he said when he was a teenager is stuff that wouldn't fly in today's world, but he's owned up to it like a mature adult. He would say despite this she would use it to hold it over their head to make him feel bad, basically trying to downplay any apology they make in the future because she doesn't like him. He speculates it could have been an attempt to get people to believe it was poor behavior for why he was kicked, and then says she likes to pull off some petty stuff like that just for the hell of it. The Click gives an example that one time when someone commented they were glad he he was gone, they got ratio because people didn't like what he said, but Blair would delete those comments so that the original hate post against him would look fine compared to everything else. 
He would then say that Blair outright tried to take control of his Discord server after his surpassed hers and started up drama doing that, eventually giving him an ultimatum to fire his staff or get fired from Sad Milk. He says he was still new to YouTube and felt extreme pressure because he didn't want to lose any connections or anything like that, and that his team after this will look behind their shoulders all the time in case she tried to pull anything off. He says that nobody talks about this because they feared she had alt accounts that would try to ruin their careers in case they brought it up, before ending his thread off expressing his disappointment that she hasn't changed at all. Another former member named Wonderstruck would come out with his own experience, saying that Blair indeed acts the way that Chris was saying. He would state that during his time as an editor for Sad Milk, Blair was poor at keeping direction and making everything about herself, going on to say how he would work his damnedest to make sure everything was good, even skipping out on Christmas because an editor she hired messed up and didn't even get a proper show of appreciation from her, and saying how she delays payments so she could buy expensive stuff for herself. He would say that Blair would try to constantly paint a new person as a villain just because she doesn't like him, and going to say Sad Milk broke apart not because of creative differences but because of her, starting from the meltdown call she had with Click and another person named One Topic at a Time. Wonderstruck would explain that the channel started off as a fun little side project, but that Blair wanted to take control and turn the channel into a view based platform rather than a fun one, straight up making certain changes to the way their content was on the channel, which led to a decline in the overall quality of what they were producing for their viewers. He says after a bunch of people left because of the call, he would be the one doing the heavy lifting, and that he tried to make proper schedules for everybody left and keep Blair in the right mental space after she broke down wanting to delete the channel and Discord server, but that Blair has an overall negative aura around her, such as making fake accounts to stop Click and the others who left to keep tabs on them for no other reason other than hating them. Wonderstruck would then say that Blair watches a lot of people through these alt accounts, and would try her hardest to shut down anyone that dared speak bad about her, even hitting up her lawyers whenever she felt she had a chance to take them out the legal way. He would say that this negativity and vindictiveness was insane to witness in real time, and that no matter how hard he tried to get the channel back on track, Blair and her inner circle would start to shut him out and trash him because they didn't like him anymore. He would then say for the 30 days he lived with her, Blair was a nightmare to live with as she's just a negative person in general, and shows off how messy her room is in an attempt to show how bad she is, saying that she was always subtweeting about him and others and whatnot to make him feel bad alongside her Discord manager. Wonderstruck would say his therapist suggested he leave the house because it was bad for his mental health, and during that time he ended up with no car, no home, barely any clothes or money, and he was basically back to square one having to fend for himself with nobody else out there to help him. He would say that she even threw away his YouTube play button once he left and that he spent the last two years of his life rebuilding from scratch after this awful experience being around her. He would end things off saying he's happy that her past is finally catching up to her and that he's not afraid of her no more, and would apologize for making the thread so long as he moved on from everything. Another former member named Ozmedi would come out and go on to explain his side of everything, saying that during the whole Sad Milk project, Blair was the main person controlling the channel because of her lack of personality, and that control led to a defensive aura whenever people tried to assist her or give her ideas on what to do. He would say that Blair is indeed the aggressor almost all the time, and that she rarely publicly apologizes whenever she screws up, instead doing so privately as she once told him publicly admitting fault makes her look stupid and weak. She would then block people, silence detractors, delete comments, and basically try to force things to slow down to prevent any more interaction, saying how a sad milk shield blacklist former collaborators, yet manually approve hate comments about them to make them look bad, and that she's apparently been at this practice for over 4 years now. Oz would say that she would confront people through him rather than herself, making him her frontman so to speak, and that their relationship thrived off this spokesman-like way they went about talking to each other. He would say he knew what he was doing was wrong but kept it up, even moving in with Blair at one point in Colorado and that she was always talking about these people trying to plot against her, saying that he felt it was his responsibility as a friend to try and protect her because she seemed to be treated bad. He says this all led to backstabbing and whatnot in his own personal life because of the way Blair acts, being forced to choose her side that while she and her staff appreciated, he felt he did everyone else around him dirty and had massive regrets about it to this day. He says he did all this because he trusted Blair as a friend, but in hindsight he was just being used by a paranoid person that tried to shut down anybody she didn't like. He would say to Blair herself that she heard him through all this and then ask her to just own up to everything and apologize for how she's acted and admit her fault where she needs to. Another former Sad Milk member named One Topic would also talk about their time there, saying that everything started off cool but ended up being super stressful for him, going on about the beginnings and their future content ideas and how it started off so happily between everyone. He would talk more how this was a new thing for him and how money was low at first on YouTube and again talks about how it started off great, basically going on and on about the beginning of the channel and how it was happy and all that and how everyone had each other's backs, naming an instance when the click got his channel wrongfully terminated on YouTube and how they all worked together to get it back. He would talk more about his personal hardships trying to run the channel and do his real job, and despite the hard work they were still happy to do it all together. One Topic would then start to talk about the tipping point, 
saying it was a combination of things like different time zones and people not being able to make time for the channel as they had their IRL stuff to worry about, and that when arguments would start to happen, he'd always try to find a middle ground and fix it up before things would get out of control. These arguments would fracture the group and things would break down, with it affecting his mental health along with many others as they started to split apart. He would learn about Blair starting up all these rumors and how it hurt to see that happening, with everyone staying silent and hoping things would die down but wouldn't do to Blair, ending it off saying he had no interest in participating in drama after the fall of Sad Milk, but that it is what it is at this point. While one topic statement can be summed up as, Sad Milk fell apart but I didn't think Blair would spread these rumors, it was Click, Wonderstruck, and Oz's statements that were sticking with people the most. Click was clearly trying to point out that Blair has a history of being abusive and extremely vindictive, Wonderstruck had this general bad experience his time around her and added to all that, and Oz pointed out in detail just how bad she is in retrospect, with that picture of the room giving the people the idea that Blair is so hateful she'd rather try to ruin someone's life than clean her own house. This was very interesting to see, because while there's always been this weird sort of vibe to her, seeing a bunch of people that have worked close to her in the past come out and explain their experience with her was something no one was expecting. There wasn't any hard evidence to support these claims, mind you, but when you see a YouTuber with over a million views speak about this, it would be stupid of him and the others to outright lie about Blair. To be honest, I wasn't expecting anything to come from these tweets so I just moved on, but much to my surprise, Blair would upload a 43 minute video going over all this, so let's see what's up together and see what she has to say. Blair would open up the video and explain why it's being made, then apologize for the legal eagle situation as her getting caught up in the heat of the moment in the first 3.5 minutes. Everything starts off fine enough, and even her section on the plagiarism claims from H-Bomber Guy was good, as she shows that she did indeed list the documentary as a source of hers, she just didn't do a good job at making it clear in the video itself. When you go to my sourcing page for this particular episode, you can also see that the documentary is listed as a source. It has been three years since I posted this episode, and I've been really grateful to be able to continually learn and grow with time. Since then, I've learned to be much more overt and obvious with citations, something that may not have been perfectly clear to me three years ago. I apologize for the oversight of not making that quote more clear. She was going to explain this is her trying to not have a bunch of words on the screen, and it makes sense because a lot of people do this, they'll take little bits and pieces and put it in their video and have the sources in the link below. Blair would then get into the Sad Milk situation, explaining that it was just a collaborative channel with friends that could mess around and have a good time making Reddit reaction videos. Things would start to go south with money issues popping up and paying the editors, with Blair showing that other members weren't paying on time or were taking more work to not pay one at all, and she had to front the money in the meantime which was troublesome for her to deal with, and started to build a negative aura around the project. She even shows there was a change in the contract between them where she would get 5% extra of the money due to taking on extra duties and the rest of the group members, and then gives context to the meeting Click had when she was yelling at someone. Something the Click brought up in his Twitter thread was that I was angry and yelled in a meeting, but what he didn't share was the context of that meeting. As I've previously stated, the scheduling and money issues had been an ongoing problem. In the meeting that he vaguely references on Twitter, this is what actually happened. I had become more and more frustrated about how I was doing all of the work, I was doing all of the maintenance, and then I was also having to financially foot the bill to the project. As I said, it was burning me out pretty quickly, and I was thinking about leaving the group. Ozmedia suggested that he try to run the meeting and I not attend, and I agreed. But one topic and click were very insistent that I be there, even though I said I was not ready to talk and I needed more time. So when I entered the call, I tried to let everyone know that I was uncomfortable with having this conversation and I was not ready to have it. Again, I would like to point out that at this point in time, these were still my friends. These were people that I liked and cared about. Letting your friends know, hey, I'm not okay right now. I'm really stressed and hurt. While you all get to stream, I still have to pick up the pieces to keep this channel going is a really difficult conversation to have. Before the meeting started, I was told that if I didn't show up, that they would not have the conversation with me and everything would just stagnate. So I tried to put the channel and my friend's needs above my own. Reluctantly, I joined the conversation, and as I was speaking, one topic talked over me, and out of frustration of this happening yet again, I raised my voice and said, can you shut up and let me talk for once? And he left the call, and that's the last time I ever spoke with him. She would go into apologize for lashing out in such a negative way before talking about the click himself. Blair would bring up some videos from over a decade ago of click saying some nasty stuff, and then says that he's still been using the same kind of language even today. You are right. Those videos in question are old, and at this point, they're kind of irrelevant. People can learn and people can change. That being said, at the time in 2020, Click was still using horrifying language and slurs that have long been deemed unacceptable. She would then talk about the Discord server and his claims that she was trying to take it over, so to speak, where she would explain that his mods came to him after a situation involving a 9-year-old and a 12-year-old were brought to light. In Click's Discord, there was a 19-year-old bragging about a 12-year-old that he was claiming to be involved with. 
a moderator reached out to get more information on this situation. This 19-year-old then reiterates, and I am directly quoting this here, I talked with my therapist about it, even too, and he told me as long as I don't touch her, it's okay. Click and his team did not pursue any immediate action to ban, restrict, or report this individual. So those shared mods came to me, and they told me that they were uncomfortable. So we used this individual's ID number, and we banned them from the SadMilk server and from my server, and we reported them to Discord's trust and safety team, who we hope did pursue this further. Then I went to contact Click to see what was going on, and it was mainly because I didn't want to believe that he would blow off someone clearly discussing such an inappropriate relationship. When Click didn't initially take action, I switched tactics with him and I called one topic, who was and still is to my understanding, one of the Click's closest friends on social media. I got into a call with both of them and I shared these files with them. And one topic opened the files, he was horrified, and he said, and I quote, I've read one and I don't want access to those screenshots. It was after this conversation that Click took action and reported and removed that individual from his server. Now, as you can tell, this is where things start to get a bit weird because you can see Blair telling a story in a way that makes it seem like Click knew about the situation yet wasn't doing anything himself. But when you think about it, there's no way if Blair would know this or not. And she was just assuming that Click knew it wasn't taking any action, projecting that into her video. Also, you might've noticed the jump cut. Well, that was because Blair brought up an irrelevant situation involving a former admin who was sharing NSFW images to people they knew who were underage. This isn't relevant at all, yet she brings it up in the middle of her explanation to try and use guilt by association to further the idea that Click is an irresponsible Discord admin. It's not exactly the most subtle thing either, and it's pretty obvious what she's trying to do. And that was odd to me because the video so far was actually doing a pretty good job explaining her side of things. She would then claim that Click was cultivating an environment for inappropriate behavior because of this, which again, is based on her assumption that Click knew about the situation when there's no way of telling if this was true or not. Blair would go on to talk about Wonderstruck, which starts off with her explaining that he edited the Christmas video on his own accord and not because she asked him to, before going into their personal relationship together and how he would tell him his life wasn't moving in the direction he wanted to. Due to all this, Blair would end up driving him up to their house to move in with him and then explaining her reasoning behind doing it. I want to explain my perspective a little bit here. At this point, I was finally starting to feel comfortable with my channel, and I felt that I was in a good position to be able to help somebody out and truly change the lives of one of my close friends. I was in what I felt was a privileged position, and I wanted to share that with someone I cared about and wanted to see succeed. With that in mind, I decided to hire Wonder to do some editing work for my channel. She would then get into the details about hiring him for her company as an employee and how he missed a deadline but that she decided to keep him on because it's just one deadline and nothing crazy, and then talk about him acting inappropriately with others. Although there was only a minuscule amount of work for Wonder to do, he still managed to act up within company spaces. He made inappropriate comments on forms that were visible to other employees, he didn't complete tasks that were assigned to him, and he failed to follow company protocol. I have a strict policy regarding formal disciplines, and within his short time of working with me, he had already met the criteria for termination. Blair would then get into the situation where Wonderstruck said he couldn't talk about it legally, and then explain her side of things and how it went down. After many in-depth discussions with Wonder, I made the decision to purchase a vehicle that he had already agreed to enter into a rent-to-own contract with said vehicle. On June 12, 2021, Ozmedia and I collectively decided to take out a loan together in the amount of $42,359.69. Additionally, I brought $28,346.79 in cash as a deposit. Wonder did not contribute to the deposit on the car. She would go on to talk about the rent to own contract some more and go over the nitty gritty of everything and sum it up as a situation that Wonder not only lived rent free in her own house, but she was also losing money because of the way the car contract worked out. She would then say she went to repossess the car back where Wonderstruck moved back to as it was still technically her property, and then proceed to show pictures of the car in bad shape. First showing that it was dirty and unkempt, that the windshield already had a big crack in it despite just being one month since he moved out, and that the glove compartment was broken as well, basically trying to show that Wonder is an irresponsible person and whatnot. Blair would then explain that all the stress caused Wonder to send a message in which he threatened his own life, so she would call for a wellness check on him to make sure he was okay and didn't do anything drastic. She would then hit up her own therapist and try to hook him up with him as she believes she could help him out, and vaguely hints that this caused a rift between all parties but doesn't explain any further. And unfortunately, after I recommended Wonder to this therapist, there began a conflict of interest and I could no longer in good conscience see her for her services. Wonder, I am so incredibly sorry that I unintentionally created a conflict of interest between the two of us in regards to this therapist. I did not mean to make that an issue between us at all. 
She would then bring up some issues between each of their dogs, like how Wonder wouldn't clean up after his own and when the dogs started to fight each other, Wonder wasn't doing his part in being a good pet owner, specifically bringing up a story in which he was negligent with him. I was woken up at 2.30 in the morning by Oz because Wonder was panicking because James was gone. Wonder admitted that he took James outside to go potty, then having forgotten he had done so, he left James outside while Wonder left the house with Oz. That means that he left his own dog outside unsupervised for hours on end in the middle of the night. She would then say they did indeed get the dog back the next day due to the neighbor finding him, so all is good on that end. The next part is explaining the dirty room picture that Wonder showed, in which Blair would say that it was a picture from a room dedicated to unboxing which is why it looked messed up and trashy, and that there was no reason for him to bring this up other than to try to make her look bad. As for the photo that Wonder posted claiming that I live in a hoarder home, I want to clarify that as previously stated, Oz and I had only started moving into the home around mid-April 2021. I still had my room from a shared lease with multiple roommates until June 1st. During Wonder's stay, I was still in the process of moving in and unpacking. Furthermore, the photo he shows is a photo of a room that wasn't lived in by anyone in the house, and it was being used as a temporary storage and unpacking site while everyone was moving in. What was the point of this wonder? Why would you even bother posting something like this except to humiliate me? This was a room that we told you we were using to move, and we let you know it was off limits to you. That photo alone shows your consistent lack of respect for Oz's and my boundaries. And wonder, I am sorry that I was ever friends with you. My short involvement in your life clearly caused you so much harm and emotional distress and I never want that for any of my friends, past or present. And for that, I again want to apologize. I hope you find peace. She would thank Oz for being around her during her mother's cancer diagnosis and issues in a very somber and sad tone for people to listen to. The truth is, like we've privately discussed before, I always hope that we'd be able to reconnect again in the future and mend our friendship. I meant that when I said it to you, and I believed you when you said it back. Even after everything that's happened, you were the one person that I always thought we could just get it and pick back up where we left. And unfortunately, I think that ship has sailed. Oz, I miss the friend you were to me, but I think this makes it clear that we finally need to cut all ties. The rest of the video is her concluding everything as the video would end off, giving a final apology to her audience for what has happened. As y'all saw, the section with Wonderstruck had a lot of very personal and nuanced stuff going around, such as the rent to own situation with the car. I understand her reasoning as to why she felt that way toward the car and whatnot, because she did take out the money herself and it was technically her property, yet the part where she starts to chastise him because the car was in an unsavory shape is a very narrow way of going about it. The car being dirty and having a broken windshield have their own stories to be told. Maybe Wonder hadn't cleaned up that day yet, or maybe a rock hit the windshield and needed fixing. So for her to paint this as if Wonder is downright reckless is wrong, because she doesn't know why things are the way they are, she just assumes it's because Wonder is a bad person and reckless, and projects that assumption onto her audience in the video. The part where Blair shows Wonder's mental breakdown now is also just really poor. I understand the concept of showing things for context, I do it all the time, but given it's such a personal situation, it shouldn't have been shown to people. At that, it feels like this is her again trying to paint Wonder as a mentally unstable person. Given the whole tone of this specific section about him, it just feels really damn weird. That's not to mention the dog stuff, which to be frank, nobody really cares about and it just comes off as yet another private thing brought up to try and make Wonder look bad. Overall, the video started off fine, but the assumptions made about Click and especially Wonder were just really weird. As while it does seem there's some poor judgement on both sides, Blair tries to paint both of them in a bad light when the examples she uses easily could have another more benign explanation to them that she doesn't bring up for one reason or another. Click, Wonderstruck, and Oz would make their own statements soon after the video dropped, so let's take a look at them together. Click explains that while yes, Blair did pay out of her own pocket to the editors, he actually paid her from his personal account to show her he wasn't screwing around, and in fact she failed to mention that in her video showed something was up with her. He also says the Discord call was a lot more hostile than what she let on for her viewers, and the big thing here is that just as we expected, Click wasn't even awake during the situation in his Discord server involving the 19 and 12 year olds, so it makes perfect sense why he wasn't responding, cause he was literally asleep. The fact that Blair didn't bring up the fact he paid her from his personal account, and that he wasn't even awake during all this shows that she was being very manipulative in her video. He would allude to a lot more stuff and then says he'll make a full response video soon, so we can wait and see what that entails. 
Wonderstruck or write out a whole twit longer about the video? First saying that Blair is lying about his editing status and that he was working in a much different world than what she said. He then explains the Christmas situation was because of an editor she hired made a bad video, and he felt he needed to step in to clean things up as the Sad Milk channel not only had his name but everyone else's names in it, and he felt the video was trash overall and would make him look bad. He then explains that he lived rent free in her house because he was only supposed to be there for 6 months as they were building a house where Blair would be his landlord when it was finished. He then talks more about the editing issues that were going on on his side, how computer failures plus changes in the content she wanted is what led to the break and not because he's a bad editor. Wonderstruck would talk about the car issue and say that the rent to own contract is apparently not legally binding according to his lawyer, and that it was a mess because he was living in it and a rock hit the windshield, and she apparently took it back because she knew he wasn't legally bound to it. The biggest thing by far out of all this is that he claims the picture he showed of the house is actually recent and not from two years ago like she made it out to be, calling her an outright liar and manipulator to her audience for trying to skew the narrative in such a dastardly way. He will link screenshots of all the relevant information, but the most important one here is the very message that Oz sent to Wonder showing the image that Blair claimed to be from 2021, and as you can see, it was sent to him on January 14th, 2023. Oz would even say the mattress wasn't even bought until 2022, and this past January would personally message Wonder saying his eyes are now open to Blair and he regrets not seeing it any sooner. The stuff having to do with the car, sad milk, and the NDA, while important in their own regards, aren't the deepest to cover. The car part is mainly just a screenshot of Blair sending an email asking for the car back or she'd repossess it. The sad milk stuff shows that it was making decent money in January and still an okay amount even months later. And the NDA stuff is Wonder talking to the NDA guy about how Blair subtweets all the time and talks mad shit, and expresses his frustration with how the situation is going and how she's being an unfair asshole trying to ruin his life. As you can tell, the situation between Wonderstruck and Blair is far more than your average easy to understand drama, but rather former friends that had a falling out and are now airing out a bunch of shit about each other. Some may think it's just a bad breakup airing out on the internet, but when remembering that Blair implied a lot of things about Click and straight up lied about the pictures of her house and Wonderstruck for bringing them up, it's obvious here that Blair is the one being a disingenuous person. I get why people are calling her a liar, because she is a liar now, and instead of owning up to anything she'll just say lies or half truths to try and get her way out of the situation and make the others look bad, and that in turn makes the words of the others more believable. Lying about her house being a mess is a great example. Blair could have admitted that yes, her house is indeed messy and then try to spin it as Wonderstruck trying to maliciously attack her in her mental state, but instead she's too embarrassed to admit that. She lies about the pick and in turn gives Wonderstruck more ammunition to use against her and shows everyone that she's a liar and invalidate her words some more. The fact that Blair had an easy way to victimize herself but didn't choose that route shows to me someone who didn't think this through well enough. Hell, I'd argue someone showing off your messy house to make you look bad is indeed a messed up thing to do, yet because Blair tried to spin it in her favor and lied doing it, she ultimately failed after being caught lying to her audience. Click would upload a video response on May 2nd, in which he goes over the recent situation involving Blair. The first would be how she tried to pin the blame on him for not banning the Discord creep in time, but he then explains that he was asleep during all this, so there's no way for him to even know what's going on, not to mention he has over 44,000 members and it's unrealistic to expect someone to micromanage a literal town's worth of people. He was banned at 2.14 AM, my time zone. She brought one topic into a chat room, as she shown in her video and her accusations. However, her statement in these DMs about click knowing is very odd, as I would have been very unconscious when the ban was happening. She might be referring to me knowing by the time I woke up, but the fact remains I wasn't there, nor did I endorse this random creep. Our server alone has 44,000 members and almost 3,000 bans. It is a well-known fact that Discord has real problems when it comes to exploitative individuals and communities using their platform. We as creators do our best to clean this up as well as the platform teams. Neither I nor my team condone this sort of exploitative behavior and do our best to address it when it comes to our attention. This isn't a clicks discord issue, it's a discord issue. He would say he saw a bunch of chaos when he woke up due to Blair's meddling, and that he was the one who reached out to her after he figured everything out to try to get things back under control. He would show Blair trying to make false implications that Click had this issue for months when that wasn't the case, and go over the irrelevant situation involving the mod and the NSFW images. Click would talk about the abhorrent language claims, in which he shows Oz saying it was most likely an overreaction alongside the message he sent after Click asked him what he remembered, and to be honest it really isn't that much of a big deal and Blair was just trying to look for anything she could to make Click look bad. He would then talk about Blair regretting helping get his channel reinstated on YouTube, and then get into some instances of her vague posting about former members of Sad Milk. Immediately after announcing her departure from Sad Milk, within three hours, this statement was made by Illuminati and retweeted by Sad Milk. This, as anyone would know, started many rumors. 
Worth mentioning, she also pushed Wonder to release a hit piece video on myself and OT back in 2021. When Wonder left, she retracted her support by removing her comment under the video. Wonder has since then retracted the video and apologizes for the false insinuation it contained, and I hold no grudge against him. I wish him the best in telling his own story and living his best life. He's a sweet guy who got caught up with the wrong people. She deleted the Sadmill community tab after my Twitter thread, where I referenced her manipulation of comment sections and vague posting in order to spread rumors or manipulate the public image of us on the collab channel. So here's the deleted community tab, and the older screenshots I have from the community tab look like this. Better without click, and you can see there are multiple comments that ratio this. I mean, obviously the channel had a lot of my audience as crossover. And a couple hours later, oh my god, all the ratioing comments are just magically gone, so it looks like more people are hating on me than they actually are. Oh my god, how could that have happened? Oh, I guess we'll never know. He was then talking about the insinuations people try to use against him and make him look like the bad guy because they didn't like him, including one where she indeed has his own staff member leaking DMs to her. Here she is, leaking and nitpicking a message from me to my staff, proving that she did indeed have insiders in my mod team after she and I had parted ways and the crossover staff had officially left. She says, yikes, and here is me saying that, oh yeah, you notice the staff has left again. Basically, what happened is that OT and I left Sad Milk. It was becoming an increasingly tense environment with the group, and at the end of the day, we had no real option but to take a step back. With that change, not surprising that the staff from Sad Milk was asked to leave, and I hold no grudge over it. The positive side to this is we will have more freedom within our own ranks to form this place as we want it to be without too much influence from outside parties. Paired with that, I will now have more time on my hands and I can help with day to day tasks. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in staff chats or DMs. I apologize for this rocky road, and I hope it will be easier in the near future. I will also book yet another meeting, Lemao, in the near future. Love y'all. He just lied to his staff about what really happened. What, I, I just said that people left? They, they did, though. They weren't asked to leave. Oh, wait, I read that wrong, but he's pinning it on me. I don't, I don't, what are, why are you spying on my Discord, man? This isn't even the worst of it. But throughout this whole section, Blair's trying her hardest to make Click look bad over literally nothing. Such as paying someone to go through old videos of his to look for dirt to use against him in case he tried to step up on her. Here's a former staff member of hers getting paid to sift through raw audio recordings of me looking for dirt. More specifically, the R word. I needed to work with this person to help me find Click saying the R slur in Sad Milk's raw audio. I can do that, just let me grab the shower and I'll be down. She claims he said it in a Sad Milk video, but can't remember which one, and she's over her head. I'll pay you $200 to find it, and here's the payment. <laughs> I mean, there's it's just an example, I'm sure there's more, which I don't have a problem with the word R, but she does for some reason, even though she uses it in private. <laughs> Click would then go over the biggest piece of evidence on the video, that being Blair making alt accounts to paint Sad Milk in a bad light and on Twitter to just harass and start rumors against the people she doesn't like anymore. And she says, 16 seconds, the alt account is gonna love this. In the next screenshot, you can see her writing out a draft. I saw in the Sad Milk announcement of all the milkmen, now I'm seeing the comments. We all agree it's obvious they're not on good terms. Blair tweeting about being stabbed in the back, etc, etc. This draft matches with one of the posts made by an alt account called Doobie Schmertz on Reddit. And this is the entirety of the post. This is the truth about Sad Milk. It really looks like creative differences is dumb AF. Blair tweeting about being stabbed in the back, one topic leaving his supporter server, and then so on and so forth. And... I was a big fan of the click. I thought his streams were great, blah, blah, blah. But then I think Blair saw some of his streams. He did a stream where he watched some of his old videos. Click said the N word and replies and claiming I'm not going to reply and I'm horrible. Here is a long post. I'm not gonna... You can pause it if you want to read the whole thing. I I don't want to. Here is the same account, Doobie Schmertz, on Twitter. This was an account I remember distinctly from 2020, 2021, that was relentlessly harassing myself, my friends, my colleagues, my streaming colleagues, past colleagues, ex Sad Milk members, community members, stat, you name it. You name it. At the time, I wrote it off as a disgruntled troll with a little bit too much time on their hands and tried my best to ignore it. This was Blair all along. She was making alt accounts to spread her stuff because she probably knows deep down inside that the stuff she was digging up on me and all the stuff she was doing was so petty that she could never actually make a public statement of it. So she did this just to get back at an ex-colleague.
That was just a small piece of the section in his video, but it's very obvious that Blair hates Click that much she wanted to harass and ruin his career simply because they don't like each other anymore. He would even show a screenshot of Oz begging Claire to stop this harassment, and end things off talking about the Wonderstruck situation and wishes that Blair would stop harassing people and slandering their names like she's been doing for so many years. On May 11th, Wonderstruck would release his response video about the situation, a whole one and a half hour dive into his experience with Blair starting from the very beginning when they first met. A lot of stuff that is said is stuff we already know about, but hearing it from one of the main people involved adds a lot more credibility to what's been going on. He would introduce the entire situation at hand before getting into the nitty gritty, saying how during that sad milk call Blair was the one who was raising the stakes and being the aggressor, which led to members leaving soon after and wonder backing up Blair on a total lie. During this call, Blair began to become highly irritable and raise tensions where they did not need to be raised. I'd like to clarify that OT did not speak over her out of disrespect, but out of a minor discord delay, to which she said, and I quote, Shut the f up and let me talk for once. I remember it clearly. It was very nasty and it was the first fatal blow to Sad Milk and the events that transpired and led up to today. OT departed in the following days. After this, Click departed from Sad Milk as well. Audience members grew confused about this, so she took to Reddit to falsify a narrative which you can read on screen. I joined in as well on this. I explained how those who departed did not help us in numerous ways and that it all fell onto us. I'd like to point out that I directly lied on this post. Click, one topic, and the others did in fact assist in Sad Milk greatly, but they were growing in increasingly frustrated and burnt out as what had started as a fun project of friends had turned into a content farm. He was going to explain that despite his real life struggles at the time, he always did his part to make sure Sad Milk ran and he paid his dues, including skipping out on meals just to show how dedicated to the project he was. Alongside that would be him pointing out a glaring contradiction when trying to smear Click for saying a bad word, showing she's done it herself. When those videos surfaced, it wasn't really all that shocking to me as Oz Media and I had actually talked about how Click had been using the Arsler while we played games together. Wonder would then go on about the situation where he edited out a Sad Milk video on his own terms and gives a little context from his side, talking about how the editor that was hired was garbage and that he did indeed do what he needed to do in order to keep the quality of the channel up to par. We either let down the audience and post a very scuffed video that would exhibit a lack of care for the content we were making, which was not ideal given we had just lost half our members. We delay the video, which ties in with the first issue as our Christmas Eve video, which would either get out the 26th or the 27th at the earliest due to our available editors. Or we scrap the video, which leaves Blair out of money regardless, but now we have also wasted an entire trip visiting another state, and there are a bunch of expenses that can't qualify as a tax write-off. I'd like to add that no, Blair did not directly asked me to make this rework. However, Blair had made it clear in the last few months, especially when Click and OT left, that she felt she had no help with the channel, that she felt the responsibility fell onto her. This was me helping her, not just her, but a project I dearly cared about. He would also talk about how he was getting late payments from his work on Sad Milk, such as getting paid on the 1st and 29th of January, but not the 15th, unlike how his contract was written up to be paid every other week. It explains that he wasn't suffering in Austin, Texas, despite how Blair painted it out in her video, but it was everyday annoyances that everyone deals with that he was talking about with Blair. Like, oh, I'm gonna maybe go get some groceries today. You gotta wait like five hours in line behind rows and rows of traffic. You wanna go to the park, you gotta drop like $15 just to touch grass because you gotta pay for parking. As for my roommates, I only had one roommate and he's one of my best friends who I would do literally anything for. Have I gotten annoyed with him? Yes. Who hasn't been annoyed with any friend in their life? I'm sure I've done plenty of things to piss him off. Is he a terrible person? Never in a million years, so I don't know why this is even really being brought up. He even goes on to explain he never had major issues with the car either, which again is a complete opposite of how Blair painted it out in her video. I have never had one maintenance issue on that car. In fact, my brother still owns the car to this day. Wonder would go on to show that the trip he took to Blair's wasn't specifically to discuss him moving in with her in the future. It was actually for a planned Sad Milk segment that they did together, along with showing proof of that with the dates being very close to each other as seen on Twitter and the plane tickets. She was also discussing of being the landlord of not just him, but also other members as well, with Wonder showing a screenshot of her looking at housing locations on Discord. Wonder would again talk about how he was only supposed to be at her house until the other was done being built, and Oz Media provides testimony that during this time, he wasn't given any work, but he tried to earn his keep by helping around the house among other things. I might be wrong on this, but you actively did try to like assist her with her like uh, the candle shop that she was just starting up and 
mean, she didn't like that, but you were actively trying to seek out and find work. So it's not like you were just like freeloading off of it. You, from, from my memory, you were trying to actually earn your keep. Wonder would go on to talk about how he was only employed there for 60 days, which is why he didn't use any of the benefits included because he had more important things to figure out, like how to get around Colorado and that visits to the doctor were the last thing on his mind. He would even show that after moving back to Austin, he was actually fired before the deadline on the current project he was working on, as it was delayed to August 2nd by a manager and he was fired on July 30th before he could even finish it. He would go on to show further proof of his laptop corrupting on him during this time, which is why he was facing these deadline troubles to begin with, including the clip of how scuffed it was. Said in a statement that it was pleased with the ruling which would allow it to continue to use sh treatment. He would go further into the exact details, like how he flew all the way to Colorado just to get his computer set up to finish the project, showing that he wasn't slacking off, but that he did indeed try his hardest to get back on track. He would even talk about the supposed comment that would have gotten him immediately fired, and this was the only thing he could think of that would have been it. I reached out to Oz and I found the answer, and the comment I made was supposed to be grounds for termination. I'd like to reiterate that means a total loss of income to a person. This was the, along the lines of the comment that I made. If I could be an animal for a day, I would be a furry, and my favorite food would be ass. You can't make this up, man. Total loss of income. Wonder would go on to talk about how Blair would have been in control of every aspect of his life, including being her employee, the house rent, and the car rent as they are all provided by one singular individual, Blair. She had a hand in every single aspect of my life, and at any moment she could take it away when she felt, which is exactly what happened. He would go on to show his confusion about how exactly the LSA that Blair's business provided works given the way it was written, and then start to talk about the car situation. He said he was mostly kept in the dark about how everything was going, saying that the biggest input he had was choosing the seat colors, and how during all this Blair would brag about how she'd be able to retire at any moment because she was such a successful businesswoman and all that sort of stuff. During all this, he would try to keep busy, but given he wasn't getting any work, he started to feel like a burden and showed some messages talking about that with friends of his about his current state of affairs. Wonder would go on to explain he decided to move back to Austin and stay with his father due to this mental struggle, and that before he left, Blair made him sign that rent-to-own paper you've seen already, knowing his reasonings to leaving being to stay with his father. But before going, Blair had me sign her BMW contract she had been meaning to get to me for a while. She was fully aware of my intent to visit my father and stay a while, especially given that again, I worked remotely. He would go on to show that he did indeed have insurance for the car unlike how Blair was saying, and that he agreed to pay the depreciation value on the car now that he planned to move to Texas and it was technically not his property. He would ask for all the papers showing the legal amount he owes only to never get a response back. And then Blair would fly down to Austin to re-put a car despite him being in the middle of figuring out the exact amount he owed her. He explains the car being dirty and shows some more photos of it. Going on to once again state he was basically living in it due to moving out of Colorado and couch surfing at his dad's whenever he could. Wonder would talk about his mental health struggles starting from adolescence to give the audience an understanding on how he as a person functions and how he goes about his daily life. This would culminate in his move to Colorado feeling like he's finally started to make a name for himself and move forward, only for that to go bad due to Blair's abusive and manipulative nature, and he would end up back in Austin just two months later. He would go on to say he sent a message to Blair saying he wanted to end it, but his therapist would call him that day as they had an appointment and things would settle down from then on. He would go on to talk about the issue with his dog James, and how James bit Blair's dog Casper because Casper was the one going at him, not James going at Casper. He then explains that the reason James escaped was because the fence wiring was a bit messed up, and that it was actually him who was called when James was found, not Blair. Blair talks about putting James on the next door app, which despite my reservations against Blair, this was a good act. But again, what she leaves out is she didn't get a call about James. I did. After James had run away, I searched for hours well into the early morning hours looking for him. And I believe somewhere between 7 to 9 a.m., somewhere in that time frame, I got a call on my phone that James had been found not far from the house. I immediately got up, exhausted as hell, and I went and I picked him up. If Blair got a message on the next door app, I don't know how when I was the one who went and picked him up. Soon after finding James, he had an accident due to eating whatever the hell's outside, and unbeknownst to Wonder, went downstairs and had another, in which Wonder explains this is him not knowing James went downstairs in a complete accident, with Oz providing testimony once more. You were actually like very well awake and already cleaning the mess up when we had actually got upstairs. Um, what had happened was woke up that morning, came out from the basement and there was like, you know, a trail of dog mess is the best way to put it. Kind of like just leading all over the downstairs. It went up and down the stairs and, you know, Blair and I, of course, we weren't happy to see that initially. But when we had gone upstairs, you were already cleaning up the mess. Blair had to leave the house and that left you and I with cleaning it because you and I, we were actively cleaning it up. We were both taking turns using the pet vacuum. I was covering the downstairs and you 
you were covering the upstairs. It's not like you just slept through it either. Um, you were actively cleaning. Wonder would go on to say he did try his hardest to mediate the dogs despite what Blair said, and then get into the issue of Blair's dirty room. We already know she lied about this as seen by Wonder's Twitter account, but Oz himself also gives his own piece as he was the one who sent the images in the first place. Uh, this is tricky to talk about just because like that was like the condition of living with Blair. Like that that's always how it has been. No matter how many times cleaning was attempted, it always ended up becoming that level of mess. There, there was no cleaning in that house. It was always a disaster. No matter how many times attempts were made, it would take less than a week or two for things to re-messify. And I remember when I was messaging you, there was just that, a level of frustration because it felt like no matter how often I would actually clean and do stuff, it, it just always like like remessified there there was no cleaning it just felt useless and she would never help with cleaning it, it was always me i was always the one breaking down all 800 of her amazon boxes i was always the one doing anything cleaning wise oz would even be asked about a section of the video where blair tears up about everything and implies this is just another way at her manipulating people by playing on their emotions <laughs> there's not really a, like a nice way that I can actually say this. I've like watched her build those tears up on multiple occasions, whether it's she forgot she had a prior engagement. So she built up tears and said, I have to take Casper to the vet and I'm very scared so I won't be able to make it. Or for talking to other um, like content creators that she's had issues with of welling up those tears for like apologies, for talking with employees, for talking with uh, me or her roommates. It's something that I have watched her do on numerous occasions. If they were genuine, I mean, there's that, but I have a really hard time believing it with how many times I've actually seen her build those tears up. Wonderstruck will end off the video thanking people for sticking by and listening to his story, and that he's gonna chill out for a bit after recounting all this. Normally I do some sort of dive into the situation and the multiple sides and whatnot, but to be honest, there's nothing else to be said here. This isn't just a falling out between friends over petty stuff. This is someone who hates her old friends so much she will do whatever it takes to try and undermine their careers, whether that's lie about them over and over again, or even get her own hands dirty too. I've heard small little inklings that she's always been this way, but you never really believe something so vile till you see it yourself. Blair is a lying, manipulative, vindictive piece of shit who will do whatever it takes to make someone look bad if she doesn't even like you. Even after this main controversy, there's still new info coming out. Like this post from Sarah Manchester talking about how a writer of hers got access to her Facebook group despite being barred from joining. You can see how her and an admin pointed this out specifically while they were talking to each other on what to do and they decided not to let him in, only for the writer to contact her through email and ask why he was denied access. Sarah would then tell him it's because they specifically work for Blair and don't want her to use their info as she has said bad things about him in the past and don't want anything to do with her or any people that work with her basically. Despite knowing the exact reason why they weren't allowed in the group, the writer would eventually get access due to a mod not knowing who they are and was kicked within two hours, but they already got the info they needed and soon enough it was used in a video of hers as seen by the source link below. It's not the biggest thing we've seen in this video, but it's shady stuff like this that adds more and more to this giant mess that is Blair's career. Blair has been trying to brute force her way out of this controversy by posting non-stop about whatever new topic her team makes, but the comments and that like to dislike ratio ain't looking too hot, and I don't blame people for acting out like this. And for those of y'all wondering, yes, she is indeed still deleting all the hate comments she comes across in order to get people to stop spreading the word around, and even privated her subreddit alongside it. Deleting comments has been her bread and butter for years whenever she gets in trouble, but this is only going to keep people commenting some more until they see justice, so let's see how long this goes on for. She's already lost around 100k subscribers since this, so only time will tell if she gets away with what she's done, or if it'll finally be the end of the Illuminati YouTube channel.